What's up guys, Bao Bean here. Today we're gonna to be talking about tautomers and how they contribute to mutation. So let's get started. In my last video, we talked about different types of mutations such as SNPs and inversions and insertions and deletions. So now we're going to talk about something else that causes mutations. And this is tautomers or a tautomeric shift. This is a spontaneous event where the individual nitrogenous bases change the way that they base pair. So if we look at a normal thiamine here, it is base pairing with its adenine group. We're kind of pretending like there's an adenine over there and it forms two hydrogen bonds with its base pair adenine. So this is when the thiamine is in its keto form. So this is its standard form where it has two hydrogen bonds with its base pair. However, it can undergo a spontaneous reversible switch of a hydrogen atom. So it transfers into a different form. So it's going to transfer from its keto form into its enol form. So let's see what that looks like. So here we have the thymine in its standard keto form where it's base pairing with its adenine and it forms two hydrogen bonds with that adenine. But then it undergoes this tautomeric shift, this spontaneous change where the hydrogen that was normally paired with this nitrogen is going to shift and now it is going to pair with this oxygen. And now this creates a scenario where this thymine is now in its enol form. So now in its enol form it is going to create three hydrogen bonds with the next nitrogenous base or rather with the base on the opposite strand. So now instead of pairing with adenine, which also only wants two hydrogen bonds, it's now going to preferentially bind with guanine because now it has three hydrogen bonds that it's trying to form. And guanine solves that because it also wants to form three hydrogen bonds. So this spontaneous tautomeric shift changes this thiamine from its keto form into its enol form and changes it from binding with the adenine, which only requires two hydrogen bonds, to now binding with a guanine that takes three hydrogen bonds. This tautomeric shift poses a mutation risk for the cell because it doesn't see it as any type of mismatch or any type of damage. So because this thymine in the keto form changed to the enol form, it now wants to base pair with guanine because it wants to form those three hydrogen bonds. And because there's a correct number of bonding, it doesn't see it as a mismatch. So normally, if this was a normal thiamine in its keto form and it tried to base pair with a guanine, there would be a bump in the backbone because there wasn't the correct number of hydrogen bonds. That guanine was going to want three hydrogen bonds and the thiamine can only give it two hydrogen bonds. So it's going to create a bend in the backbone and that would be a mismatch that would be detected. But because our thiamine has transitioned into its other tautomeric form, the enol form, it now now also wants to have three hydrogen bonds. And so when it pairs with guanine, it, there is going to be no distortion of the backbone and it's not going to be detected by the cell. So then when we undergo two rounds of replication, this is going to induce a mutation into the cell. So let's get a little bit into how that will induce a mutation. So here we have a strand of DNA that's going to be replicated. And we can see here that one of the thiamines has induced this tautomeric shift and it is now switched from its keto form into its enol form. So that's indicated there by the stars on either side. And so now because this thymine is in its enol form, it's going to preferentially base pair with a guanine. So that's what we see here. So after one round of replication, there is no actual mutation. There is just DNA damage because there is not a double stranded change. There is only this strand that has the incorrect base. So instead of having this G here, it should really have an A, but this other side, even though it's in its tautomeric form, it's able to switch back and forth. And so there's only a single stranded change here. So we have to follow this into a second round of replication to see where the mutation would incur. So looking at the second round of replication, we can see that these two strands were pulled apart. So this is our original template strand, which originally had that tautomeric shift on the thymine. But because it's a random spontaneous change, it can decide to change back into its keto form. So that's what happened here. That thymine went back from having its enol form back into its normal keto form. So now when it goes to undergo replication, it's going to have the A placed in, 
as its base pair because it's back into its normal form. And so now this DNA helix is going to be totally normal and have no mutation associated with it, no damage associated with it. But the new helix that's going to be made off of what was in round one, the newly synthesized strand, that is going to be where we see the mutation. So now on this strand, a G was placed down where it should have really been an A. And so then when it goes to synthesize the new strand in the second round of replication, it's going to place a C. So now we have that double stranded change. And so now we have the mutation induced. So after two rounds of replication, you would get three cells with totally normal DNA and then one cell that has a mutation. It's gonna be that one cell that got that piece of template strand and use that to create that mutation. And again, because there is the proper number of hydrogen bonding between this enolthiamine and the guanine, it is not considered a mismatch and is therefore not repaired. So when we think back to our thiamine that induced that tautomeric shift and it changed from that keto to the enol form, after we followed the cell through two rounds of replication, we got a cell that had a GC in the position that should have had an AT. In that example, the thiamine that was supposed to be in its keto form and base pair with an adenine, it did its tautomeric shift and transformed into its enol form. And now it preferentially base paired with a guanine. So then after two rounds of replication, what should have been a thiamine got replaced with a cytosine. So that case, because the thiamine got replaced with a cytosine, we call that a transition mutation. And the same thing is true if an adenine gets replaced with a guanine, that is also going to be a case of a transition mutation. So anytime a purine is replaced with another purine, that is called a transition mutation. And anytime that a pyrimidine is, is replaced with a different pyrimidine, that is also going to be called a transition mutation. Anytime that a purine is replaced with a pyrimidine, that is going to be called a transversion mutation. So if there should have been a G there, and then the tautomeric shift, and then the replication induces it to become a thiamine, that is going to be called a transversion mutation. The same thing is true in the other direction. If an adenine gets replaced with a cytosine, that is also going to be called a transversion mutation. Some tautomers can come in the form of base analogs that are still capable of inducing mutations. So here, looking at a uracil, which is the mRNA level equivalent of a thiamine. So anytime that you would normally see a thiamine in the DNA level, when we're looking at the mRNA level, we're always going to see a uracil. And that uracil preferentially base pairs with an adenine, just like a thiamine would. However, these, this uracil can be modified into what's called a base analog. So a base analog is something that looks like the correct base or the normal base, but it has a little bit of a modification. So in this case, it has the same identical structure to uracil, but in this case, the OH group has been replaced with a bromine. And so now, instead of being called uracil, it is now called 5-bromouracil, or BRDU for short. And now, this base analog, instead of pairing with an adenine, is going to preferentially pair with a guanine. And so now this is going to cause a mutation following two rounds of replication the same way any other tautomeric shift would. So this bromouracil is considered to be a mutagen because it induces a mutation once it's introduced. So now this BRDU was introduced and now instead of pairing with the what should be a adenine, it is now pairing with a guanine, which is introducing a mutation into the DNA. So that concludes this video on tautomers and tautomeric shifts and how they're able to induce mutations within the DNA. If you have any trouble understanding this or any biology related concept, please visit biologybean.com where you can access all of your tutoring needs. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.